Um, it is just a couple minutes now before two o'clock and uh, Natalie is our next speaker. Uh, she is with Widex. Uh, Sandy, do you want to give her a brief introduction? You bet. Um, just want to welcome you, Natalie, to, um, to our meeting and thank you for your willingness to present for us today. And also a huge thank you to Widex for your continued support of our society and especially our summer meeting. You guys have been amazing to us over the years and the donation of hearing aids and the like is very, very much appreciated. So um, we want to thank you for that. And I just want to share um, Dr. Loyola is a clinical product specialist with Widex. She's an audiologist living in beautiful San Diego, California and has worked in various settings, including children's hospital, ENT clinics, um, and also in industry, both with hearing aids and cochlear implants. So she's gonna talk a little bit today about Widex and their new technologies uh, via their, I guess you say moment technology, and <laughs> um, incorporating virtual appointments. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, and thanks again. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I know it's been a long day, so I'm going to try to make this as exciting and juicy as possible um, and get you on your way. Um, I know I'm the last presenter, so I got to make this a good one, but um, thank you all for inviting me. Um, I'm excited to talk a little bit about what our remote care system is, as well as our new moment technology. I'll touch on that as well. Um, very excited, like I said, um, and so let's just get right on in. First and foremost, I actually just wanted to show you guys um, what contacts you have in regards to who's near you and who you can contact in case you even need like patient care assistance or just or anything like that. So um, over in Washington, some of you guys may be familiar with Ryan. He is your representative out there, as well as your inside sales rep is going to be Barbara. Barbara. I'm Natalie. I'm one of the trainers for the West. So I am here for Guys, if anything happens, if you guys need any additional trainings, if you absolutely fall in love with the material we're going to cover today um, and want to just take a deeper dive, I'm happy to get that on the books and um, through Zoom too, virtually we can uh, take a step and do that. Um, I wanted to point out you also have Seekins. She's your regional outreach audiologist. So she is fantastic. She's she knows everything. It's, it's rare she doesn't have an answer for something. So she's a fantastic resource. Um, she gets lots of calls throughout the days. If you're with a patient, if you have a quick question, um, if you just want to give a call, she's right there. She, um, her role is just to be on standby for all of you. And then lastly, this consumer support number. I'm not sure who knows or who's aware of this number, but we do have actually a team designated out at our headquarters in New York um, who is just there to support your patients in regards to Bluetooth connectivity issues, pairing, anything like that. So in regard to, you know, when you guys are doing your first fit or follow-ups, and if you happen to have um, any questions arise about, oh, my phone keeps on pairing, or I'm having issues with Bluetooth, anything like that, go ahead and give them this number, and our team will help take care of that so they don't have to keep on calling you guys. I'll just give it a couple other seconds. Um, but yes, we are your team. We are your resources for WideX. Okay, so Widex Remote Care. I'm not sure who here has done it and who hasn't. Um, it is a fantastic system, and I'll talk about all the parts that you need um, to make it work, to get it going. Um, but one thing to note with our system is that you actually can do everything in our software as if they were in your office. You physically, literally the only thing you can't do is otoscopy. You can't physically look in their ears. But the great thing is you can read a feedback test, you can do our sensogram, you can do any type of fine tuning changes um, and you can get them out the door um, as if they were right in front of you. So let's talk about what that entitles, what you need on your end and what your patient needs to make this work. And this is just a quick dial, uh, little picture showing you guys what it looks like from your end and then to their end utilizing um, our app as well as what I'm going to talk about our remote link that goes around um, their head to connect to the hearing aids. 
Um, one thing to note is our remote, remote care works with all lines. So not only just our new moment technology, but it goes all the way down to our Widex dream line. So if you have patients in evokes, beyonds, uniques, dreams, this all works with our remote care system. Um, low limitations on even premium or um, anything above, you know, your um, advanced level, it works all the way down to basic. So you really get access to everyone utilizing this. So what are the remote care requirements? Let's talk about that. First and foremost, you're hearing healthcare professionals. So you just have to have our newest updated um, GPS 4.0 software version. Um, so if you haven't had that, like I said, feel free to send me an email and I'll send you that link just to update to the nearest, to the uh, new 4.0 version. Then um, you have to have a login for our cloud services. And we'll talk about how you register for that. It has a 24 hour return rate. You just sign up and within 24 hours, you'll have that in your email for your user and password. Then you just need a webcam and mic. So it looks like most of you guys have that as of now, so it works perfectly. And then for your patient, they will just need to download that remote care app, and then they would need that remote link device. So we'll talk about what that looks like, um, and we'll just, uh, there's videos on here to kind of show you and walk you through it. So here we have the newest GPS 4.0, and at the top there, it points to a cloud. That is where you sign up or sign in for your cloud-based services. So for example, if you had already signed up, you would just put your username, password, enter, and you'd see a green check mark letting you know that you're checked in. Now, if you don't, as you can see here, you go down and create a user. All that entitles is your first, last name, your email, your phone number, and then down there, you just choose your clinic. That right there will send an email out to our headquarters and within 24 hours you'll receive an email back with your username and password then you'll log in and then you'll be you'll have a green check mark next to um, that little cloud what that does is it gives you access and let me go back really quick to show you this remote care at the top left under that session start right there you may see that it is grayed out once you log into the cloud services that remote remote care button will be um, at, you will be able to access it so we'll want to make sure that you're logged in. Once you are logged in, and these are just some recommendations of webcams. If you need these, I'm happy to um, provide them via um, email, but it looks like you guys already have webcams and are ready to go. So here is the easy setup. You've already logged on to your cloud base. You're ready to go. What you're gonna do is you're going to, as I mentioned, and I'm gonna just take it a step back, your patient needs what we call a remote link besides the app. So that's the little guy that goes around their neck. Before you give it to them, you actually have to dump their NOAA file into it. That way you have their previous last version of whatever programming or um, anything that you've done in, the, in that little guy ready to go. And how you do that is you just, once you, you, know, you get it sent via Widex, it's arrived in your office, all you're gonna do is make sure you're signed into the cloud, you're gonna have access to that remote care button that I talked about in the top left, when you click on it, it's gonna ask you to just, and it'll come with a hardwire mini USB. So you'll USB it to your computer. And what it does is just by doing that, it'll say, do you wanna register this remote link? When you press re register remote link, that will dump their NOAA file into this little guy. And that's it. You have now successfully signed this patient up for that remote link. Then you go ahead and give it to your patient. Now here is the thing. This is where I recommend, depending on if your patient is tech savvy or not, you can do the pairing really quickly for them. Or if you think that they could do it, um, it's very easy to do. What's great about it is the app walks them through it. So you'll just tell your patient, you're gonna wanna download the Widex Remote Care app. They download it and this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna say, get started. Okay, I'm gonna grab my remote link and what it asks you to do is to hold it down for five seconds. The five seconds will blink blue. It's looking for the device. Your phone, the app is looking for the device and then your phone's gonna say, yep, the app's gonna, the app found the remote link. You'll click on it and then they're good to go. They are now paired to their app. So now you are ready to just go into the, the appointment. So all you have to do now is set up a time with your patient at when you wanna get together. Um, and then let's say, okay, on Friday at 11 a.m., we're gonna meet for our appointment. You treat it just as a, as a normal appointment. At 11 a.m. on Friday, your patient's gonna hop on their app. They're gonna wanna make sure they're wearing the remote link. 
important note, you want to just make sure they fully charge that little guy, just making sure it's fully charged, ready to go. So they're going to put it on, it's been charging overnight, and they hop into the app. You're going to go into their NOAA file, into the, into the YDEX software, and then you're going to go ahead and click on that remote care button again. You've already registered the patient to that remote link. So next time you click on it, it actually opens up a secondary window to the left, as you see. And at the bottom, they're going to be able to click join meeting. So you're going to say, okay, I'm ready. It's 11. I click remote care and I join the meeting on my end you are ready to go. Now you're just waiting for the patient to enter on their end. So to show you what the patient is gonna do, and just to show you, once you're in, this is how easy it is. You're in and you treat it as a normal appointment. You go ahead and connect the hearing aids. It'll detect the hearing aids that they're wearing via that remote link. And then you do everything as if you were able to do it in the software. You can run your feedback tests. You can, um, you can run our, um, what we call our, and I think it's grayed out, you may not be able to see it, but here in the settings, there's actually a quality assurance test. That test will run a quick little test through the hearing aid and the receiver to let you know that it's running correctly. This test is fantastic to let you know if there's actually maybe some wax in the receiver, it'll tell you the receiver isn't functioning. If there's anything, you know, in, if your patient's saying it's intermittent, it'll let you know that there's something wrong with the internal components. So it's a fantastic test to run while, you know, they can't be physically in your office. After you're done, you hit end meeting. That's it. You just go ahead and save the patient's file and you're ready to go. On the patient's end, this is what it looks like. Just want to give you a quick look. They would just go into their app and it would say join meeting. So from there, they would join meeting. It would tell them you are the first person in the meeting. For example, if they're waiting on you on your end. But once you click in, for example, you can see here in the video, you're joining in, you click remote care, you're, you're hitting join meeting. And it's, it's almost like a FaceTiming appointment. Both of you guys now can see each other. So you wanna remind your patients to make sure they're dressed because you will be able to see them. And from there, as you can see, you're in the session start screen. You go ahead and connect the hearing aids and it's like a normal appointment. So truly wonderful um, how well the system works. It just allows you to, as if they were right in your office, do everything normally with the cross, without the cross, any kind of device that you have, you can um, do this uh, remote care, which is fantastic. So after that ends, your patient would just leave the meeting and then you yourself as the professional will end the meeting as well. Any questions there? I know I ran that through a little quick, but I just wanted to assure you that it's very simple. I will say the feedback that I've gotten from professionals who have utilized the system is just how impressed they are with how easy, how they have access to everything, how truly it's not too many steps, it's just setting it up. It's truly you, your computer, you have a camera, you have a mic, you're ready to go, you're just logged into your cloud services and then your patient has the app and then they have the remote link um, with their NOAA file already dropped in. Those steps at first, they might, you know, you might just have to get comfortable with that. But once you get going, everyone in, um, who's done this, who uh, continuously does it right now, especially during these times, um, have loved it and have said that it's worked fabulous in regards to making sure, you know, for your older patients coming in, they're a little bit safer, things like that. Any questions here from anybody? Natalie? Yes. Um, the remote link. Does yeah. that, when, how do you order that? How expensive is that? Is it something that comes on young promos or anything like that? Yep. So as of right now, I know, ooh, I know there's a little bit of an echo. I know that there is a price, I believe it's about $65 per uh, remote link. And it's up to you and um, how you want to structure it. I've seen so many different ways how they've added this into their practice. Um, some professionals have uh, you know, they, they sell it at a higher price or some people put it into a bundled price. Um, it's all about how you run your clinic. Um, it's just a minor price through us. And then after that, the great thing to know about the remote link is you can fit up to five NOAA link or NOAA files into it. So if you wanted to do it as a, um, 
as a, you know, one time kind of a setup or, you know, a few times and then when they're set, they can mail it back to you and you can mail it to somebody else that works it, it will, um, you can drop five different files. And the great thing is, after you drop five files, let's say there's a new patient, if you put a new file in, it'll just drop the first patient that was ever in there. So you can use the remote link over and over and over again, which is fantastic. And I've seen a lot of providers do that. Natalie, you flashed your first keyword up on the screen. I didn't know. Yes, I was going to get back to it. Okay. And I will do that right now for everybody. So I will give you, I just wanted to go back. Let me. Okay. So I know that first keyword was moment, which is the next topic. Any other questions about remote care? And so there's two steps. You first have to dump their last mail file into it before they leave the office. And they also need to pair the age to the remote link that they can do that last step themselves. Correct. So, so the dumping of the mail file, file is really the provider's responsibility because they have access to it. Um, I would say, depending on your patient, you can either help them set that up. It's a five second pairing. Um, system but uh or if they're you know if they're, tech, if they're tech savvy they can do it or you can do it either way all right any other questions yep so just to reiterate um Thank you, Christina, for asking those questions. That remote link has a very, it has a very small price. I believe it's about $65 um, per each one. But the great thing is, it, depending on how you want to structure and how you want to implement this into your practice, I've seen some that just give one to each patient or they just use it as a loaner um, kind of a way and have patients return it or mail it back. And then sometimes, um, if you know if patients can't come in, you can always mail that out to your patient as well. Um, we have fantastic step-by-step -step guides if um, you ever want to mail one out to your patient in regards to how to pair it really quickly to the app. But as you can see, once they download the app and they hit get started, it actually walks them through and how to do it. It'll tell them go ahead and grab your remote link, hold down the button for five seconds. You should see a blue flashing light from there. It will automatically find it, and then you move forward, and that's it. So as long as they have a great um, they have good, you know, internet, they download the app and they have that remote link. All you have to remind them is make sure you're dressed and ready to go because I will see you during the appointment and then you're ready to go. All right. So thank you for um, being there with me for remote care. Other questions, go ahead and feel free to reach out to me, Ryan, Terry, any of those contacts that I, that I uh, showed you earlier today. And then going right into what Widex Moment is. So just a reminder, the remote care will work with Moment, our newest chip, and it'll work all the way back to our dream line. So all those hearing aids that may be out and about now and uh, evoke and whatever line, those will be, um, you can utilize that in our remote care. Now in regards to what Widex Moment is, um, this has been fantastic. We've been, this is actually our most successful launch to date. It has just done so well. And the feedback we've gotten in regards to sound quality, how fast patients have been satisfied with it, it's just been great. So let's talk, it's been doing so well. First and foremost, we just uh, to talk about the four pillars of what the moment has. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about what pure and natural sound is. It's the newest, um, just ever the jazz about what moment has been and what it's delivering for your patients. So we'll take a little bit of time there. We'll talk about personalization. We'll talk about connectivity and rechargeability. And then lastly, um, a little bit about the software. So first and foremost, our new moment technology has a new algorithm. So that calculation in the back end that calculates overall how your hearing aid is going to be set, how much gain is going to be set, um, it has been updated. And how it's been up updated, if any of you guys have worked with Evoke or anything prior to this, is we actually gathered all that data, all the data that um, we saw in regards to receivers in the canal and all the different dome types that you may work with. So sometimes, you know, we have open domes, tulip domes, round domes, double domes, all those domes have so much variability in so many different ear canals. And we found that in the study that we did. We saw how different openness can occur, not only in open domes, but how much, how many, how often we get an open fitting, even with our double domes. Um, and then just insertion loss, how much we lose depending on the different domes and the ear 
ear characteristics of individuals' ears. So all of that got plugged into this new calculation. What does that mean for you? Well, really, it's going to allow you to deliver just a more precise and accurate fitting. After you run that feedback test, it actually takes how open that ear is into the calculation. So truly just think about, uh, you know, verification. We've gotten such great feedback in regards to how much better this algorithm is into meeting those targets that you may have. So just great news here in regards to, wow, I, I, I can feel confident that I'm getting a good fit in my patient. I want to keep this in mind um, in regards to uh, RIC fittings. So the HIA quarter four findings for 2019 showed that across the United States, 80% of what we fit are RICs. And then internally, when we looked at WIDEX, 90% of what we distribute to, you, to providers are RICs. So RICs have really just evolved and taken over the world really and just you know they can really encompass all different types of hearing losses with all different receiver strengths so knowing this it just you know it, it makes you question well how many of these fittings are truly open and semi-open and vented and what does that impact have for my patients so we're going to dig right into that um, i want you guys to picture yourselves back in clinic and you have a patient in front of you and let's say this is a first time fit and you put on the, you know, you put on the hearing aids, you stick those receivers in the ear and you turn on the hearing, or yeah, you turn on the hearing aid in the software and you look at your patient and a lot of the times we say, how does that sound? Or maybe we ask, you know, what do you think? How often is it that we get, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's echoey or hmm, my voice sounds weird. Or, it sounds a little robotic or it sounds a little microphony. All these common things that most uh, fitters say that they hear, um, totally common. And, you know, interestingly, a lot of the times it can be, you know, why is it? Well, a lot of it is very easy to say it's just an imperfect fit. We just put the hearing aids in the ear. Maybe we need to make some tweaking, some fine tuning. We, didn't, we just need to make some adjustments. And then a lot of the times we can get rid of all those uncomfortable sensations your patients are experiencing. But interestingly, a lot of fitters say, you know, I can get rid of most of it, but I do find myself saying, give it a, give it a couple days give it a week, you'll get used to it. Your brain will get used to it. It's plastic enough to re, like reorganize itself. You'll get used to the sound, you know? And then a lot of the times we know it's just because of limited input or poor processing of the hearing aid. We know that we can actually, you know, look at a hearing aid, look at the technology you're working with, just and know that, oh, you know, some manufacturers have better processing in this perspective or in another. But then again, we have another area that we don't really talk about, and that's the area of delay. And what I mean by that is, if you think about just audiology in general, we are complete experts of just the domain of frequency and the domain of intensity. What, but what about the domain of time? And what I mean by that is the time it takes for your microphones to capture and for the time it takes to be processed through a hearing aid and then out the receiver. How much does that delay in processing affect our patients? So let's take a closer look at that. I'm introducing this concept. Some of you may be familiar with this. Um, I want to say about 95% of the people I talk to are like, never heard of this. What is this? But I'm introducing the idea of comb filter effect. And what this is, is Think about that, you know, 80 to 90% of RIC fittings that we are doing and the high percentage of how they're open, semi-open, or vented. Now think about sound traveling to your patient's ear. It's actually going to take two different routes. First, it's going to take the natural path where it's going to go directly into your patient's ear canal. If you think about it, it's going to go right on in through that open, semi-open, or vented fitting or dome. Then you have the actual sound that's being captured by the microphone. Then it's going to be processed out the receiver in the ear canal. So both those signals, the same signal, but truly coming in as two different signals in that ear canal are going to meet at the same place, just at different times. Now, this is an area that audiology as a whole did not know how to overcome until now. So very exciting to say, you know, this mismatch in, in, in sound waves, what it really does, if you think about it, is when sound waves are not in the same timing realm, it's going to cause distortion and artifacts. Some of those waves are going to crash, they're going to cancel each other out, some of them might add, but overall that distortion and artifact 
creates that hearing aid sound that we know about. We know what a hearing aid sounds like. And what if we could take some of that unnaturalness away? What if we could take some of that distortion, some of that, my voice sounds weird or that tinniness or that echoness. What if we could take some of that away? And another, um, just wanted to show you this graph in another look. Here is, if you look at the, the graph, we're looking at milliseconds, so delay in milliseconds across frequency. And this is to show you just what the industry has always seen. So this yellow line is at 10 milliseconds, and it's what we call our threshold of echo or our threshold of annoyance. In hearing aids, anything above 10 milliseconds is truly intolerable. We say anything above that, your patients are not gonna wear the hearing aids. They're gonna say it's way too echo. They're just, they're just not gonna like them and most likely return them. So as a whole, as an industry, we said, okay, the only way we know how to solve this now is to make sure that delay in hearing aids were less than 10 milliseconds. So for your information, the industry norm of delay in hearing aids or how long it takes to process sound is about five to eight milliseconds. Okay, so it's right, it's under 10 milliseconds, but your patients are still going to experience some of those, you know, bad outcomes because of the delay. There's still about five to eight milliseconds in there. Well, really awesome um, to tell you guys is Widex delay has always been 2.5 milliseconds. So in your Evoke patients in prior generations, they've always had a delay of two and a half milliseconds. Now what's exciting in our new moment chip is we are introducing something called pure sound. And this is the quality of sound your, pa your patients are going to get. And, the, and, the, and how they're going to get it is through something called zero delay. I'm getting a little bit of, is somebody speaking? Are you guys hearing an echo? Okay, I think it's gone. So zero delay is um, the fastest sound processing engine in a hearing aid that has never been present in our industry ever. So we're super excited to introduce this new sound processing engine and it's about, it's at 0.5, so half of a millisecond processing. That is fast. We're talking about eight to 16 times faster than anything out there right now. So we're talking about the second that sound hits your microphones, it's gonna take half of a millisecond to go out the receiver into your patient's ear. Now, what is that gonna, that, what does that mean? What does that give you and your patients? It means your patients are gonna put those hearing aids on and as soon as they listen to pure sound, they're gonna say, are these on or, you know, are these even turned up? Because they don't hear that normal hearing aid sound that they're used to. And that's the feedback we've been getting that's been exciting. It's just patients, especially experienced users who have known, you know, hearing aids in different manufacturers, they put these on and say, I, what? I've never, I've never like had anything in my ears that sound like this. There's nothing there. So it's that pure and natural sound that you're delivering to your patients. What does that look like in your hearing aid? Well, prior to this, as I said, there's only one processing engine in a hearing aid. Moment is actually giving you two. So now you're going to see your microphones go to your analog to digital converter, and now you have either path one or two. It's either going to take that new super fast pathway, or it's going to take our classic engine of still 2.5 milliseconds out to digital to analog to your receiver. Now let's talk about who is going to be a candidate for this zero delay engine for this super fast engine. Well, truly, if you remember, we talked about RICs and the high percentage of RICs we are distributing or dispensing. Now, a high percentage of those, as I mentioned, are gonna be open, semi-open, or vented. So these are gonna be candidates, these are gonna be patients who really are getting you know, the, the distortion and artifacts due to the natural pathway also meeting with the process pathway. So if your patient is in a open, semi-open or vented fitting, they're gonna have some benefit with pure sound. Also, we have to think about receivers. So receivers S and M, your, your standard and your medium power um, receivers are really gonna be able to utilize the zero delay pathway. Now, as soon as you put a P receiver on, the software is gonna say, no, 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 this, this is a more severe hearing loss, they should be more closed off and they wouldn't really benefit from this new pure sound technology. Now, keep in mind, they're still going to be getting access to True Acoustics, our new algorithm. So they're going to have an even more precise fitting, overall better sound quality. 
We'll talk a little bit more about this in a future slide, but just to reiterate, it's going to really be for your open, semi-open vented fittings. It's going to be for an S and M um, receiver, and then um, also it's going to be what we can, what we classify as a mild to moderate hearing loss, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. I did want to just give you guys a peek into what the new Moment family looks like. So um, you have three new RICs three new receivers. And for those who have been awaiting our new rechargeable unit, here in the middle is the M RIC, which stands for Mini RIC Rechargeable Direct. So Mini RIC standing for Mini RIC um, because it's the smallest rechargeable unit in the industry. We're really excited to not only give you guys a rechargeable, but the smallest one out there. And then the R standing for rechargeable, the D standing for Direct Connect, meaning that 2.4 gigahertz technology. Now the RIC 312, that is just going to be your RIC with a 312 battery pull tab, and then it's going to have the D as in that also has that Direct Connect 2.4 gigahertz technology. Now you still have that small little RIC 10 for those patients who really want to be discreet, as well as your um, custom devices. That do, these don't have that 2.4 gigahertz technology, but more for those patients who want just to be able to hear, they will still have access to an app if they want to control volume um, programs or even directionality focus, they'll still have access to all of that. I did want to show you guys the new colors. It's very exciting. We have new colors. Um, we moved away from that two-tone look for those who have worked with YX before. Um, we definitely listened to you guys in regards to making it just more of a one-tone look. So we did definitely hear you guys as well as listening that you guys actually match more to hair than to skin tone. So we, we provided you with a little bit more of those hair colors available. And then of course, we, we included those fun colors for you guys. Um, so as I said, that new lithium ion option, it's not only the smallest one, but it also has that 2.4 gigahertz technology to really take it all the way. Just keep in mind also, just to reiterate, all of these products, the six new, um, the three RICs and then the three customs, these will all be able, you can still use our remote care with these. So as long as you have, you know, that remote link that goes over their head, around their neck, they're gonna be able to communicate to your hearing aids for remote care. So really, I'm just excited to give you guys an option, especially during these times where your patients may not wanna to travel to office or be surrounded by others. Um, if you wanted, you know, even if they're in older technology or they're thinking about new technology, coming in to get a new pair of hearing aids and giving them the option of being able to go home take home a little remote link and then you'll be able to do all their future appointments from home is a really great um, thing to offer. Um, a few things about our new um, rechargeable. It is the new most protected hearing aid ever. And what I mean by that is you might have noticed that um, the 312 has always had that kind of boxier look. Our new rechargeable is much sleeker and rounder. So it's gonna just be aesthetically more pleasing. It's just, um, I love the new case. I think it's fantastic. Um, they rede redesigned it with the mind that they wanted to be the most durable hearing aid out there. So they redesigned all the microphones, um, gave them new uh, durable MEM microphones, just more water resistant. There's no battery door, fully encased rechargeable battery. And then it, even if you're familiar with CIs and the over rings around all their connections. Same thing here, they added an O-ring around the receiver um, to just make it overall more durable. With that comes more durable receivers. So for those who work with YX, um, everything that you have in stock, you will still utilize. Uh, the receivers that you have in stock will still work for the new Moment 312 or the new Moment RIC 10. For the rechargeable, you'll have new receivers since they made a whole new case. So I just wanted to point out that um, if you are thinking about moving forward, if your patient you know, wanted to purchase the new um, Moment uh, software or not software uh, technology and they also wanted to do remote care um, just make sure that you have the right correct receivers that they will ship with the right ones but it, um, if you wanted to have a stock of them um, they are our new v2 version 2 receivers and as you can see here we only have an m and a p so m will encompass everything that s and m did prior and then um, what's great about the stainless steel design is that we can make them smaller than ever so the, uh, the new m is about the size of the previous s and then the P size um, is comparable to what I've heard, like the 85 decibel receiver for Oticon. So they're, they're smaller, they're all about the same size, um, which is fantastic for those tiny ears. 
I did want to point out the charger. So it's very slim, lightweight, and simple for you guys. Um, it's a fantastic charger, very easy to use. They have these fantastic um, charger wells. So all you have to do is drop the little guys in um, and they do magnetic charging. So it's a power transfer charger. Um, the, the charger will just transfer over power to the batteries. There are no contacts. Um, you can't put these in backwards. You can't overcharge them. As soon as you put them in, they'll turn off. Um, and then four hours for a full charge, 30 minutes for four hours so really just giving you guys really quick charging um, the four hours of the full charge will give you about 16 to 20 hours so really just giving you um, all that full day's worth of um, listening the 16 hours is more of like a heavy streamer if you had one of those patients um, and then you have LED indicator lights there to let you know when when it's charging it's blinking when it's fully charged it's solid powered by USB connection. It'll come with that wall plug. So fantastic, easy to use. So a few things about the technology levels. As I stated, um, remote care for you guys, if you are truly interested in that, it goes down to the 110. So you could have the most basic level of technology up to premium and then all the way down to the dream line. So that is the one thing I would say is so fantastic about the remote care that we have to offer is we're not limiting it to anybody. Everybody can use it and not only can you use it, but you can actually do everything in the software. So that's, um, I think, something that really makes WhiteX special in regards to taking care of your patients while they're not coming in the office. In regards to 440 to 110, that new pure sound I talked about, that fantastic sound quality, will be offered all the way down to the 110. Um, same thing with that true acoustics new algorithm. Just to show you that 2.4 gigahertz control, so streaming and everything goes down to the 110. Same thing with our new app, all the way down to the 110. We still have 11 of those sound classes, those automatic sound classes that your, um, your automatic hearing aid will go through to dictate what environment is best for them. You'll have 11 of them in the premium and then it'll kind of um, take them away as you go down in the level of technology. Lastly, things like speech enhancement, your smart wind manager, all the way down to the 110, you'll have some form of a wind management or a speech enhancer. Um, but as you can see, as you go up to the 440, you're gonna have more of a real time, faster, automatic, better, quicker um, level of technology. And lastly, down here, if you look, Zen, Zen is one of those other features such as remote care where it goes down to the 110. So if you had a patient who came in with, you know, normal hearing, but they have tinnitus, that 110, you would, they would get everything from Zen tinnitus. Okay, just a reminder, so Pure Sound as I stated, it's going to be for your mild to moderate hearing losses. So if they fall into this pink configuration, what happens is when you go into the software, you will automatically get a pure sound program. It'll read your audiometric data and say, oh, yep, they fell into that range. They're a perfect candidate for this awesome um, level of um, acoustics. Now, if you fall outside of that, if you have a patient who's maybe like at 45 or 50, 10 dB outside of that, we still highly recommend that you add it in. You just go into your program manager and add Pure Sound on in so they can experience it. I would always recommend go ahead and toggle between Pure Sound and Universal and let your patient decide where they feel um, it just sounds a little bit better to them. True Acoustics, our new algorithm is gonna be for everybody despite hearing loss. So if you're a mild hearing loss or a profound hearing loss, True, True Acoustics is gonna kick in to give your patient the best, most precise hearing uh, and fitting ever. Just a few things about the app. So I know we talked about the remote care app. Um, very easy, It'll, it's just a one pager, get started, pair your remote link and then go into the meeting, very easy. Also just if they needed, um, for their own sake, you know, to manipulate volume or programs, they do have access to this new moment app. Very similar to what the Evoke app will look like. A um, few things, we took some feedback in regards to the screen and um, how patients, you know, they would go into a theater, maybe it was a little too bright. So we made the overall uh, screen darker. So a dark design, and then we just also made it very intuitive. So easy to follow, save buttons, um, add buttons, create programs, um, directional focus, so you can add a directionality program, save it as a program, whatever they need as well as true, um, a SoundSense Learn. So not sure how many of you guys have worked with SoundSense Learn, but it's a fantastic feature for your patients. So 
I like for you guys to think about those certain patients that maybe come in very often because they go into different types of environments and they can't find the right program or they say, you know what, this, it just didn't work. Can you make me a program for this? Or can you make me a program for that? SoundSense Learn is fantastic to give your patients just a little control um, and so they don't have to keep coming in to get different programming. And what it is, is it's our machine learning or what we call our artificial intelligence technology. And what I mean by that is, when you go into it, it actually gives you an A to B comparison. What I mean by that is it'll give you a profile, sound profile, and a B sound profile. And what you'll do is they'll be listening to the hearing aids, and when they click on A, it'll be a different sound profile. When they click on B, it'll be a different sound profile. And from there, they'll say, mm, I like A better. And based off of what you're choosing, it's building to, make, to get the best sound profile for your patient. As soon as they find the one they like, they go, oh yeah, now I can hear those voices or I can hear what I was looking for. I can hear, you know, th those lyrics that I really wanted to enjoy. They can hit save on the program and now they've created a program specifically for that environment. So really just overall great technology um, for your patients, especially when they're making such a great investment at times, um, just a tool to let them know, you know, I'm here for you, but sometimes if you need a little extra boost here and there, you have the power to do so. As for the, so this Moment app is gonna be for those direct connect hearing aids. So the, the hearing aids with the 2.4 gigahertz. So we're talking about that new Moment RIC 312 and the new Moment Rechargeable. As the Moment RIC 10 or, or any of the customs, they don't have that 2.4 gigahertz technology. They'll be utilizing what we call our Tone Link app. So they'll still get access to program changes, volume changes, directional focus changes. But the great thing about this app is what it does is it actually, it emits a 14,000 hertz tone that allows them to communicate to the hearing aids. After they've connected, you can make those changes in the app and the patient has access to all of that. So I just wanted to show you a quick screenshot of what the software looks like. As soon as you're in the software and let's say you do fall into that mild to moderate configuration, this is what your programs will look like. You will get that pure sound automatically and then universal and music are always your default programs. So in case you don't see pure sound pop up, you can go into your program manager and add it in. If you yourself say, yep, I'm still you know, semi-open or open or vented, you know, my patient's still in that mild, moderate range, maybe they're five or 10 decibels outside of it, add it in and give it a shot, toggle between the programs and see what their preference on sound quality is. Lastly, I wanted to talk about our demos. If you guys don't have demos in your office, it's, now is the time to get that opportunity. Um, they've been fantastic in that we made the change that make them flexible for you guys. So you actually can choose the level of technology you want to demo in. So as soon as you connect them, it'll ask you, where do you want to demo? You can choose 110, 220, 330, or 440, and then you can demo it on your patients. Okay, so I went through that very quickly. Here is your last keyword. Um, go ahead and write that down. And then other than that, I think I, I ended about 10 minutes early from the question portion. Um, but I'm hoping that you guys got a good amount of information here in regards to both our remote care as well as what new moment technology has to offer. Um, as I stated earlier, if you guys have any questions, I'll actually go back to um, the phone numbers. Feel free to not only email myself, um, Ryan, who is your rep, or Barbara, who is your inside sales rep. Um, any of us would be happy to, let me actually do this a little bit faster. Um, any of us would be happy to um, supply any supplies, any information. We have great research articles to back up the new technology that we've created. Anything on remote care, I have an easy step-by-step -step guide um, that will walk you through all of it in regards to what, your, what you need to do and what your patient needs to do. Any of those, um, just any kind of uh, support that you need, we're here for you. So can't thank you enough for letting me hop on and go through this information. Um, for the meantime, any questions before we um, close up the day? Any okay. question? Um, do y'all see any remote care in the future that doesn't require uh, some sort of neck loop? neck loop? Yep, yeah. so you are... Um, you are not the only one who asked that. Um, I can see it definitely being, you know, some some professionals find the, the difficulty in 
getting it to their office and then getting it to their patient. And so um, as of right now, I don't know what's up for the future. We definitely have sent that um, information and feedback to headquarters. So um, I don't have a definitive answer, but um, I definitely will mark um, that up. I got that a little bit earlier today too. So um, thanks for the feedback. Um, but yeah, I definitely see how that can be uh, problematic at times. Thank you. Other questions for Natalie? 